So first off, I know it took a while for you to get this off the ground. So why now? What was it that made this the right time to make the movie? Well, you know, it's, I think it's uh, it was a little bit also, you know, I mean, it, I'm not like kind of known for movies like this. So uh, people most of the time, they like kind of say to themselves, why does he want to do something like this? You know, uh, why is he not like making, making one of his other films? And us a lot of money, but um, I was uh, just um, deeply, you know, um, affected by by what I saw in the Gay and Lesbian Center Homeless Youth Program. Uh, how we like kind of live in, you know, like the society which is like kind of celebrates, you know, naturally gay marriage, and it's a good thing. But there's still kids on the street, you know, which are homeless and. And the majority, well, not the majority, but like 40% of homeless kids are LGBT, which in a way uh, tells us something about our society. Yeah. So why specifically tell this story from Danny's perspective? Because you have a lot of really rich characters here. I feel like any one of them could have been the main character, and it still would have yeah, been a but compelling it's, it's story. A, uh, uh, Danny is like the in, you know, it's like kind of, you can, uh, you can like really uh, sympathize with them. And uh, it's also probably the, the, the character which uh, gets treated surprisingly unjust, which is always like kind of like makes you a dear uh, character to you. And he's a catalyst, so through him you go into this world of uh, 69, uh, Village 69, uh, and it was a very tough world when you were gay, and especially a homeless guy. Mm -hmm. And how about his audition? Because I read in the notes that he thought he was over eager and he was never going to get the role for that reason, but like obviously you cast him. So what was your opinion on what he did in his audition? You mean like Jeremy? Yeah. Um, I, I think uh, I knew uh, immediately that, I mean, he was the first and only actor I met. And I actually flew to London only to meet him. And he flew from, from like kind of somewhere in the east, uh, I think he came from from some uh, other country in the east, uh, in the east, uh, eastern Europe, and um, we just met in my house there and, and yeah, you know, talked about it. And then in the middle of the of the meeting, I said, "So you want to do it?" And he says, so "Are you offering it to me?" I said, "Yeah, sure, I'm offering it to you. Why you think I'm like coming from all over, you know? And I don't have, you know, and I I never read him. I, I just wanted to have him." I think he is the perfect actor to play this part. I always like kind of very, uh, um, I know a lot about casting and, and I take the casting process really, really uh, seriously and uh, I immediately know he's the right person. Is there anything you've learned from casting in the past that makes you such a casting expert at this point in your career? Well, it's like, you know, I will say um, the ca uh, casting is like 80, 90% of a director's work. Because um, you cannot, um, when you cast somebody who is wrong for the part, you cannot um, make that right. You know, it's oh, just like kind of something which uh, you. That's why I like uh, have like sleepless nights when I cast a movie, any movie. So it's more stressful for you to cast than to like I do like oh, yeah. crazy explosions or I don't know work. Yes, yes, the multi -million absolutely. Dollar budget. Abs absolutely, <laughs> that's the most stressful for me. So how was it casting the rest of the characters in this? Was there a lot of chemistry reads needed? Well, it's like kind of, uh, I, I try to kind of keep um, the cast very, um, you know, so you could really, you know, uh, it was more, uh, I, I cast to kind of form a group of people. And, um, and, 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 and I found them in all kinds of uh, walks of life, you know. And uh, I have a lot of um, actors who it was their first film. Uh, for example, uh, Johnny Bouchon was his first film, and he did an uh, incredible job. So, uh, same for, goes for Vlad Alexi. Uh, you know, it, it's just like kind of all these kind of um, kids. And when we like kind of were starting to shoot, I kind of tried to kind of form like some sort of a group too by like a, having them constantly invited on the weekends. Uh, went for dinners and you know and, and like kind of tried to kind of hang out as much as possible together and I kind of in, uh, you know in, encouraged that too you mm -hmm. know um, and they all became like kind of this uh, this like kind of real you know real friendships were formed there. You can definitely tell that's one of the most appealing parts of the movie to me is the group mentality and the mm -hmm. fact that like you want to spend time with these characters yeah, and yeah, see what happens yeah, to them. Yeah. Can you tell me a little bit about how 
you took the story from, I believe you started with an outline yourself, and mm -hmm. then from script to set to screen, did it change a lot along the way? Yes, I mean, it's, uh, it's uh, first of all, I always like kind of tend uh, to always let my actor improvise a lot, you know, uh, in every movie, by the way. Um, you also first always start with the scene as written, but then you also, you know, try to emulate the character that most of the time, when you let uh, your actors go and improvise, there's like kind of really great things happen. Um, overall, I kind of actually started, you know, I always wanted to you know, tell a little bit about, you know, all kinds of forms of homosexuality because it's, um, when you look at um, the LGBT community, uh, they're like kind of very, very different uh, people all together in one community, which is sometimes, you know, um, you know, for people, you know, they don't see that, you know. When you're like um, a homosexual, that doesn't mean anything. You, uh, there is like kind of, um, you know, um, uh, all kinds of forms of it. Uh, so that was for me very important to show all forms of homosexuality, you know, from people who like nearly feel they're married to kind of people who are totally deep in the closet to transgender people to uh, lesbians. I mean, we have uh, hopefully, you know, in the film like kind of address every uh, form of uh, sexuality, which was very important. Was there any particular element of that that kind of came to the forefront in the final cut of the movie more than you expected? Or really shown through in a way? Um, no, not really. No, not really. It was uh, mainly about, uh, for me, a lot about un, uh, unrequired, uh, un, uh, you know, when you're like kind of uh, gay, the first thing what you learn is that you sometimes love somebody but that person cannot love you back because that person is straight. So that happens a lot to gay people. So for me, that was like really the theme of the movie. And the same way how Danny cannot love Ray at the end because uh, they are just too different, but they can become friends. So hard to understand that because Ray is so great and like you kind of want yes, it to work but out like for them, love, but yes, you know but, like, but love is uh, something uh, different, you know, it's like, um, uh, it's not on, yes, yes, and it's like heartbreaking, right? It definitely is. I think it's heartbreaking, but it was like so important, you know, to do it like that. Because uh, all my life, you know, um, you, I loved people who didn't love me back, you know, and you have to kind of uh, deal with it. Absolutely. Can you tell me a little bit now about the shooting process? Actually, what did you shoot on specifically? Well, we, you know, we shot with, uh, with a... Um, uh, we didn't shot with an Alexa, we shot on red uh, the first time. I haven't heard that answer to that question in a while. Yeah, but like I, sh I shot like actually my first, um, I shot like my movie before with Alexa, but I always like listen to my DP there. Um, uh, I had like a very young DP uh, from Germany, um, he was like 30 years old, exactly uh, half of how, how old I am. <laughs> Um, but he grew up with digital cameras, so he, you know, introduced me, you know, to ways how to make uh, uh, digital cameras look like film, and uh, and it's like kind of interesting because uh, we shot like with anamorphic lenses, which had like um, the same cinemascope lenses, mm -hmm. same coding, like uh, like in the 70s. So that gives you a whole film and you like that this look of like kind of uh, 70s and then we on top of it like uh, you know like kind of use grain exactly from Kodachrome film. So it is all these like kind of process was really important uh, for us. Then I wanted to kind of shoot the film first on locations but it was just impossible. Oh I can imagine. So, so I had this idea you know and it was like kind of very gutsy idea to build set indoors you know and then um, people then we couldn't afford uh, a set uh, of that size and then we said like oh let's just use big photographic backgrounds on both ends and that was cheaper than to build it and then uh, the people said are you crazy I said no it will work out uh, yeah, with these lenses you don't have so much depth of field will totally work and then when something doesn't work we can always like kind of improve later um, stuff so so it was like kind of interesting so um, and but it was great because uh, we could um, 
you know, like uh, we could shoot whatever we wanted, night scenes, you know, or we could, uh, we could choose a scene which uh, we wanted to be in a magic hour, we could shoot it for three, four hours. It's, it's like kind of quite interesting. It's you a know? pretty major plus there. Yeah, yeah it's, a, it's a major plus. Also, it was like kind of uh, interesting because um, it was all indoors and everybody was hanging out on that street, you know. Uh, it felt like more and more the extras and the actors, they became friends. That was really interesting. Did and it also give you the luxury to shoot in order? If you have that much control over your environment? Uh -huh. Shoot in sequence? Uh, we shot a lot of stuff in sequence. Yeah? That's also like something which you can do. And yeah, it's like it, it was like it had a, a, a lot of advantages and uh, not many, many disadvantages. So, so that was like a good decision. What were some of the disadvantages? Just the, the um, challenge of maybe the challenge building of it? lighting it so it looks ah. real. That like sometimes took uh, a lot of time oh, because you you have to kind of uh, study. Um, you have to study like kind of uh, real light situation and say, oh, this has to burn out so to look real, etc., etc. It's just, um, yeah, it's like kind of technical stuff. <laughs> now, I wanted to ask you about the financing because I read that you put some of your own money into it. Mm -hmm. So, what's the thought process behind a decision like that? How do you know that that's the right move Everybody to make? Everybody always like say, "Don't do it." <laughs> yeah, I've that's heard like that my, quite a few my, times. Yeah, but it's just fine. It's like kind of you have to kind of uh, do that. Otherwise, you know. More, Look, it's like this, you know, uh, there's a lot of movies out there, you know, which um, luckily people invested money in. And uh, have they made their money back? Doesn't really matter. I think uh, it doesn't really matter. Uh, and so uh, people should uh, keep doing it because um, otherwise we like live in a world where uh, the movies are populated by Marvel here, superheroes and, uh, and Star Wars. And, and stuff like that in these franchise movies. And I mean, I, I like them, but I do you want to have a world where it's only these kind of movies? Uh, and, 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 and studios these days, they're like kind of uh, making less and less, um, you know, it's for it's them harder and harder to, to make money overall. So the win margin becomes smaller and smaller and smaller. And they're like kind of less and less, you know, uh, interested in taking risks, you know, and then you have as a, Filmmaker to have to make a risk. And that's it. Do you have another uh, script in mind that you want to take a risk on after you finish up with Independence Day? Yeah, I have like actually two or three scripts already, uh, which uh, which are very kind of uh, in the same way.